Let's give it a couple of, couple of minutes as the, the masses stream in. They're coming through the doors now. So we've just opened oh. the turnstiles and, you know, let's just, let's just hope YouTube can handle the, uh, the crowds as they rush in. Let's have a look. Let's have a look at what's going on here. I feel trampled. Uh. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to set up my monitor so I can see what's going on here. Click here. Mm -hmm. And let us know in the chat, guys, if you're already tuned in. Leave us a little comment in the chat to let us know you made it. Here we go. Okay. Okay, now I've got to send you this link, Sir Hale. Shall I put it in Skype, this link? Yes, please. Okay. This is going into Skype. Okay. Okay, who's here? David is here. Welcome, David. Hello, David. Oh, okay. We definitely have one viewer, Sir Hale. So that's exciting stuff. Very exciting. Cool. Well, I think we can. I think we can rock and roll, and then you should be able. To, uh, D David Cooper, who's one of our subscribers, says the audio is perfect. So miraculously, we've managed to. We've managed to, you know, cobble together this online setup and. I think we're ready to rock and roll. Can you see the chat, Sir Hale? The online chat? I, I can indeed. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, I think we should rock and roll, mate. So I will, I'll let you take the lead. Uh, I, I Or do you want realized... me to take the lead? Okay. <laughs> well, no, no. So, how, yeah, how, yeah it's, it's an interesting question because um, I'm, I guess I'm conducting the summit, but we are, we are on your channel. So, um it, it it feels like it's a host within the hosts uh it is house. it is it is. It is, it is yeah well so um yeah. okay so let me how about how about let me because what what would be really cool it is even though it's your channel it's an opportunity to turn the tables onto mm, chris i like and it. Uh, shine the spotlight you know you normally hold the torch but i'm shining the spotlight right back at you today uh, uh, brilliant um, and uh, I, I've, I've really been looking forward to this chat because uh, since we first connected and we talked and we, and we realized that um, really you, you were mislabeling yourself and, and you were actually <laughs> in the Excel rebel. Um, which, yeah, you, sh you, get, you should have like a little uh, mask, like a <laughs> mask or something. Um, yeah. So, um, Chris, why, why? I want to. I want to recount why why we decided that you should be the XL Rebel. You you've got a kind of a different um, you know view on on things. Let, let's talk yeah. about why you. What is your different view on the world, on careers, on mm. Excel? Let's dig into a little bit of that. Sure, sure. Okay. Well, I suppose I've got my view. Um, but to be honest, I don't talk to a lot of other Excel professionals. Um, so I'm not sure myself how different, how, how my view is different, but I can tell you from the incredible videos on the Excel online summit, I've actually become exposed to some other people's perspectives. We've had Bill Jellen on here. We've had uh, a whole range of experts and it's made me realize along with talking to you that I have got, um, a somewhat different uh, perspective, I suppose. And you call me the XL rebel. I think, I think because the trap we sometimes fall into in Excel is let's do more technical stuff. If I want to get back to it better at Excel, let's do more VBA. Let's learn power query. Let's go deeper and deeper into all that technical stuff. Don't get me wrong. We've got some viewers in the channel here. Uh, don't get me wrong, the viewers of the channel know I love the technical stuff. But my controversial theory is if you can do one thing, one thing to increase the impact of your 
Excel practice, it's got nothing really to do with Excel. It's actually much more to do with things like how are you setting your projects up? How are you finding your projects? Um, how are you managing client expectations? I think that's where the big levers are in terms of improving the impact of your work. Now, I think that's why I've become the Excel rebel, to hell, but you'll have to let me know. Uh, I, I think you're spot on. Um, yes, uh, and actually, I, and I've had the pleasure of speaking to a number of people in in, in, that, in, the, in their capacity of being consultants. So uh, immediately springs to mind is uh, Roger Gervier, um, who yesterday was he was he was a very experienced consultant, and he he's an Excel MVP. Uh, he can do some inc incredibly technical things. But when it comes to dealing with clients and client management, um, he just removes all of that. And yeah. to, to the extent that he will even hide columns and rows and things like that, he so says the client did not, you know, it just overwhelms the client. Matt Allington, who I spoke to, um, he, he is, he's got a brilliant mind for turning the, you know, the, the technical into non-technical, which I imagine that you can do as well. And then there's Mark Dranksfield, who, who we'll talk to later on. He's one of my closest friends, uh, and he he's done the same thing. So um, there are some fellow rebels out there, but it, <laughs> it, it really well. What it is is that you, you still are very much a rebel. It, it, it's just that I brought together um, such a unique bunch of people. It, mm. it, it's not to be confused with the, the whole pool of people who win Excel. These are, you know, I'm talking about the leaders that leaders within this community, and and many of whom, like you, are are, are sh not shunning, but um, you know, saying that it, the technical stuff it, is is not as important in the whole equation as as you may yeah. believe or you may have led to believe. So, <coughs> excuse me. So. And yeah, absolutely, and 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 you you and I love the way you put it. You said those are the those are not the leaders you want to be pulling. It's 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 other things like how you set up the project and and, and other ways that you manage your, your client's expectations. Mm. So those are you know that those for sure. Let me just shut the door a second. Yes, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, my kids have just come back. School, yeah, so. well, it's, um, well, it's live. It's live. Can you remember that video <laughs> that, that went viral a couple of years ago where there was a diplomat being interviewed on the BBC and his and his and his kid came in and and oh, it's, yeah. it's brilliant stuff. Can I just say hi to everybody in the chat? Hi to Pankaj. Hi to Sandeep. Hi to Mohammed. Hi to DC. Uh, hi to Randy. Welcome to the stream. Put your questions in the chat, guys. We will try to get to them. Brilliant. How's it? Sandeep is asking how your chess game's going. Yeah, the chess game. Sandeep, the chess series, we got to part, I think, 24. And we're currently having a bit of a break from the chess stuff. But it will return. I'm not quite sure when it's going to return, but it will return. But you've got about 24 videos to work through on the channel. And hopefully that will keep you going until we get back into the chess game. So, um, Chris, I know that you are, you know, you, you, you're currently engaged in a labor of love, which is spreadsheets, spreadsheets for humans. Ah, uh, yes. Um, right behind you. Indeed. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> tell, tell me about um, Spreadsheet for Humans. Yes, well, <laughs> Spreadsheets for Humans is my Excel training course that doesn't quite exist yet. But for the past two or three years, you know what it's like. Uh, you have these projects to do. My big project is to write an Excel course properly. And I've got about 20% of the way through it. And the course is called, the program is called uh, Spreadsheets for Humans. And it's to do with how to learn Excel. Now, you can see on, on, you can see on the logo here. Um, there's there's a dog there, and um, have you got a dog? Uh, so here. I don't have. No, I've got, uh, I've got three children. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't have a dog until I was like in my thirties, and um, I was just struck by. This is going to sound very, very tenuous and very weird to people who have been listening to solid Excel content all week. But I was struck by how good dogs are at learning stuff. 
it's just unbelievable how good they are the stuff they can yeah. do considering they're animals yeah. anyway and and i was working with this dog we, we were training her up and i was like hang on what she's doing is exactly what you got to do to get better at excel yeah you've got to come yeah. with the right attitude you've got to keep trying you've got to have a good trainer you've got to have a kind of learning path set out for you but the attitude is the most important thing and this is what i think people miss when they're talking about excel learning i mean i know that you're an athlete yourself um Sahil, you know, uh, a Thank former you. former champion shot, shot putter. The mindset we've got to get into with Excel is learning a sport, learning a, uh, a musical instrument, learning a new skill, just like my dog was learning a new skill. So that's what Spreadsheets for Humans is all about. It's, it's actually the story of my relationship with my dog and how that taught me some lessons about learning Excel. If you can bring the right attitude to, to the table, I don't care if you've got a computer programming degree or not. I don't care if you work in a big business or not. I don't care how old you are. I don't care if you're 80 or 90 years old. None of that matters. Bring the right attitude to the table and you are going to do well with Excel. This is the idea behind Spreadsheets for Humans. Brilliant. I love it. And, and David says uh, the takeaway is that we're all dogs. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> So, so part of the reason I bring that up, Chris, and I, because I, I, obviously I'm, I'm over, you know, I'm aware of spreadsheets for humans. Now, the, the, the question I have for you, and it's a question I've asked a number of people, in your case, what would you put in the course, but very specifically, mm. what are things that you, it, that you feel if you are helping somebody to uplift their Excel skills, what are the non-negotiables for you? Great question. And there is so much stuff in Excel these days. So what the hell do we have to learn? Okay. In my view, you've got to know some formulae for modeling. You've got to know some data analysis tools for data analysis. And you've got to know some VBA for cool automation. So that's how I would set it out. So for me, you've got to know the big five formulae. Okay, let's see if I can remember them now. Here's a test. So you've got to know your basic arithmetic formula, addition, sub subtraction, division. You've got to know the if formula, the match formula, the offset formula, and V lookup. These are the big five formulae that should go in your modeling toolkit. Okay, now you might say to me, but Chris, I use index instead of offset. Fine. Use index, it does the same job. The reason I like offset is it's so important in VBA. So it's good to get to know it early. And then you're gonna to say to me, but Chris, we've got XLOOKUP now. Yes, XLOOKUP is coming, so you can use XLOOKUP. So you've gotta have the formulae to get those jobs done. I recommend you get started with those formulae. So we start with the big five formulae, and that does our modeling, which is input, input process, output. Then the second main application is data analysis. So what's data analysis? Well, if you've got a data set, and I know, Sir Hale, you've done so many of these jobs, a data set, I've done a project this year with financial data, I've done a project this year with football data, I've done a project this year with horse racing data. If you've got a data set and you want to know what's, what the hell is going on, that's data analysis. And you're saying to me, well, that's going to be pivot tables. And I'm saying, yes, pivot tables are fine. But there's a set of formulae that I call data analysis formulae. And I know Sahel loves these. So we're talking sum ifs. We're talking count ifs. We're talking D sum and D count, baby. D sum uh -huh. and D count. So pivot tables is fine, but our customers don't always like pivot tables. So we're going to learn data analysis formulae. And that's going to cover the data analysis analysis jobs. So your client's pretty happy now, but we want that, we want to have the icing on the cake. So we're going to introduce some VBA, and this is where we get into, com into computer programming. So what are the main things we need to know in VBA? Well, some basic stuff to manipulate data in Excel. And then the main kind of milestones, we're going to learn um, offsets, so position control, how to move around a spreadsheet. We're going to learn loops. So a loop is a repeated instruction, super powerful in computer programming. And we're going to learn conditional statements. So a conditional statement takes the code one of two ways. So they're the things, Sahail. So you've got to know the big five formulae. You've got to have some data analysis techniques. You've got to have a little bit of VBA for the icing on the cake. 
So that's that's how I would summarize it. So how what do what do you think? I, I love it. I think it's a great summary. I, I may be um, I, 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 I I may not use your set as much, but I'm just we're splitting uh, you know we're splitting here. So, uh, but that's a great synced summary, which I concur with. And um, I've got a video uh, as well. There's another video in the summit coming out later today. It's, it's it will be one one I did, and 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 that kind of and it talks about the skills that were you know really paramount for me. And and I completely agree with everything you've said, pretty much everything. Um, so so I like it. And I guess and and so what we're talking about that's the foundation of spreadsheets for humans. Is that what we're is that kind of the uh, the ipso facto? Yeah, that's well, that's the basic framework for spreadsheets for humans. Um, it's also when I first learned Excel, uh, mm. I learned it as part of my master's, did a master's in business analytics at University of Warwick in the UK about 10 years ago. And, and I now teach at that university. It's also the structure of that module. So, so the original module that got me into spreadsheets. Um, you know, I, I was speaking with someone today about university modules. You know, these days, there's some university modules people aren't sure if they're delivering value. But that university module delivered so much value for me. You know, changed my career. So, so hell, yeah. I would not be talking to you, my man, without that module. So, That's um, incredible. So I want to, yeah, I'm trying to, I'm trying to recreate the main features of that, of that module. And, you know, so to get the same people along the same kind of learning journey. Absolutely, and and it's funny, and and because so because when I speak to kind of young, I, I deal with graduates a lot. I've had people, you know, young graduates in my teams over the years. I've had young young relatives and family members, and and you know, and they'll say, you know, I'm, I'm starting a new job. What, what should I, you know, as an analyst or an accountant or something? Like one of my cousins, she's an actuary, and um, you know, I, I, I was stunned that that they just weren't really doing much with Excel at university. And I think you, you've got to be kidding me, right? You're doing. You, yeah. Uh, some of these people went to very good universities, you know, in in the sort of the old called Warwick, and they're not doing, they're not learning these things, and and uh, I just think that's such a quick win. Uh, I mean, mm -hmm. you when, when I had like summer interns, I just I would get them and I would just give them some resources to go and learn Excel, and they, that yeah. they would be transformed. So, so and, and to hear you say that your experience of uni, you, the best module you ever did was really one that taught you how to, uh, you know, work with with Excel. That that that's a real vindication of um, of what everything we're talking about here, really, and everything I guess spreadsheets for humans is is, is going to be doing. So so yeah. So let, let, let me ask you actually. So what what exactly do you teach um, in your in your university uh, training? New course that you do. Yeah, yeah. So I'm teaching uh, about one day a week uh, these days, and I teach at uh, undergraduate, postgraduate, and MBA level. But what people might find interesting is um, I don't teach much Excel at university. I'd say only about 20, 25 percent of my teaching is to do with yeah. Excel, and, may and maybe this is why I'm the Excel rebel because <laughs> most yeah. of my teaching is about. Um, uh, how to conduct an analytical project um, yeah. is about business strategy, um, is about broader topics, you know, topics that are broader than computer programming. So, so this is why I'm very keen on the idea that your project should, should make sense in context. And, you know, my favorite quote in management science, so there's a management scientist called Russell Ackoff. I don't, I don't know if you've heard of him, so hail. Uh, but he's, no. he died a few years ago, but he is, um, he's the OG, seriously. He said it out before we had VBA. He said it all out in the 60s and 70s. He said, and this, this, this is a bit of a mind bender, this one's a hell, but he said, it's better to do the right thing wrong than the wrong thing right. Ah, uh, I've heard that quote many times. I didn't know, I didn't, Have I didn't you heard know it was a tribute. But I love that quote. It, yeah. It, it, yeah, it's so, a brilliant one. So how does that translate? Yeah. Can, can, can I explain a little bit? Can I give my mini lecture about this? Yeah, please It's do. like, um, how does that translate into our context? Well, we're talking about people being obsessed about technical stuff and thinking the way to make this situation better is to deploy more technical stuff. But it might be you're doing the wrong thing. 
it might be you're working on the wrong project. And I always give some silly examples. So if I came to you, uh, Sahail, and I said, look at this beautiful Excel dashboard. It's an optimization model to help us uh, manufacture diesel cars. You'll say to me, well, I love the model and the dashboard, but it's just, it's not, it's not really a growth, growth area anymore. Diesel cars, you mm. know, everyone's going electric. Or if I said to you, you know, I've got this resource allocation model for, for manufacturing CDs, compact discs, you know. Obviously, these are silly contrived examples, but organizations aren't taking the time to step outside of the project and are not taking the time at the beginning of the project to structure the situation properly to make sure they're working in the right part of the organization. They're working um, so alongside the industry dynamics rather than against the industry dynamics and that the projects are aligned with uh, long-term trends as well. So um, I have a bit of a methodology for which academics call a problem structuring method um, for working through whole situations and finding the best place to do a project. And what we find is if you find the best place to do the project, then things tend to be fairly straightforward. You know, you don't need a lot of technical stuff because you know, you've got high quality data because you've got buy in from the clients, because you've got emotional commitment from the people who are going to use the tool. You know, it it means the need for the technical stuff is less pronounced. So that that I would call doing doing the right thing. Very good. Very good. That's that's a, a great um, sentiment. I think that, that, that's fantastic. Um, Actually, well, we've got a question here. It says, hello, friend uh, from Alioma. Yeah. Uh, I would like to be a professional in Excel, VB Excel. Should I memorize functions and codes? So, Chris, well, what's your thoughts on that? I've got some thoughts on that. Do you want to, do you want to fire away first? Then I'll, I'll organize mine. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so go for it. The, the, the funny thing is I was, I was talking to Mark uh, Drancefield uh, uh, about this as well, and he, he specifically talked about this, uh, and it's going to be in our – a chat in the, in the summit later and 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 he, he's he's gone as far he he absolutely says look we live in the age of google first of all you shouldn't be memorizing you shouldn't be memorizing anything the way the way it works and I, and I kind of agree even though i have courses and stuff really you want to go through put yourself through some sort of structured training right whether that's uh, 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 you know spreadsheets uh, for humans or you want to try and get yourself on a structured training somewhere which is a course then you can you have google at your beck and call if you want to use it and 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 mark <laughs> speaking to mark he 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 somebody asked him in an interview once you know tell me about this uh, formula and I, he just said look i don't know how to, i don't know the formulas i don't memorize them i know what they do i can leverage them i know how to use them to pro solve problems and it, you know i can i and here's an example and he opened up his excel spreadsheet and he he you know he got some things done so so you, you uh, specifically, I, I don't agree. You have to memorize things, and like the best way is you, you know you learn by doing. Um, so just do, Ali. <laughs> just yeah. do. Uh, there's so many. There's so many videos you can go through. I think on Chris's uh, channel alone, which is which will take you to the promised land of, uh, mm -hmm. of being, good, being good with Excel. So uh, it'll yeah. take you to the rebellion. The rebellion, indeed. Yeah. No, I I <laughs> totally agree with uh, what you've said there. I think. If you try to learn the theory first, the risk is you're going to learn everything. But mm. then we've already said you only need a subset of skills, a really small subset of skills to be able to get things done. And what I've learned from the Excel Online Summit and guys, this collection of videos is incredible. You got the experts are amazing. And so Hale does just an amazing job of uh, interacting with them. But you'll see everyone's got a different approach. We've got people talking about, oh, Power Query does everything. We've got people like me and Sahail who are saying, no, 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 VBA is the way to go. Then we've got, yes, VBA <laughs> forever. And then we've got people saying, oh, but what about these new uh, dynamic formulae that are coming into Excel? There's more than one way to skin a cat. How do you find your approach just by practice? So, so get yourself a real world problem and get stuck into it. I love that. Uh, just by practice. That's, uh, that's got to be a quote somewhere, I think we mm -hmm. can. Tweetable. <laughs> Yeah, it's a total tweetable. Um, <laughs> I haven't done any tweet. I was supposed to do loads of tweets throughout the summit, and, and yeah. sadly, I, I completely underestimated how much uh, work it was going to be. Um, uh, how long? How long do I need to be professional in Excel? Well, um, let me just get this piece of 
string right here. <laughs> Let's give you an estimate. There we go. That much time. That's how long you need. Now, yeah. it, it, so I, I so I have I, I have training as well. I don't want to talk to, about my training, but I've had people that have managed to do it in two weeks um, because that that's all they were doing. They were young people with no commitments, anything, and they had just got jobs and they had reasons to practice on. So if you have reasons to to practice your skills, that's just going to shorten your 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 learning totally. curve. Totally, so and you you're fine. You can pick up Excel projects anywhere. So um, yeah. You know, if you're getting started, seriously, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying you should go to a dinner party and just talk about Excel, but, but seriously, well, if, if you tell anybody you like spreadsheets, they'll be like, oh yeah, we're trying to do this. And yeah. if you're just trying to build up your practice, you know, may, maybe you can do some free projects, you know, to build, to build up the experience that. So, so you'll be surprised how quickly you can, you can kind of build, build things up. Uh, VCC 10 is saying, does Tiger have an Excel VBA course? VCC 10, we've got about 60 videos on Excel VBA. So just go to the channel. There's a playlist, a playlist which is called Excel VBA for Beginners. Go to that playlist and I'll see you in about three weeks. Let me know how you get on. Nice. I like that. That's straight to the point. Crack on with it for uh, three weeks and then come back and report. Yeah. Um, brilliant. Um, and it's nice, actually, it's nice talking to you, Chris, on your channel because you, we've got people coming in and, and you can just say, well, just, you know, just click on on, on the view all the videos and, and, and you know, yeah. off you go. I would, throw, I would throw one more thing is, which is if um, I do a weekly uh, live stream, so, so we're live now, we're taking questions. Uh, it's called Members Monday. So, th so this is for members only on the channel. So if you go to one of our videos, hit the join button, we, then you get into Members Monday. So every Monday I take um, a viewer request. So someone emails a file in, says, I'm trying to do this, I'm trying to do that. And then I get the file up and I demonstrate how I'd, how I'd work on the file. So if you want to have effectively a weekly live lecture um, with interaction, more like a live tutorial or a live demonstration, then just hit the join button below one of our YouTube videos, you can get into Members Monday. I would love to see you there. I, I would um, I would wholly endorse that. Um, you know, I've spent some time on Chris's videos. He's just got such a brilliant style and he, he's just very empathetic with, with uh, the mind of a learner, given that he deals with learners on a weekly basis, you know, very high-end learners in, at Warwick University doing post-grad and so forth and undergrad. Um, one thing I will say is that Look, um, folks, wherever you are, whoever you are, um, if you can, and really, really stretch yourself if you have to, invest some actual money into your learning, whether that's a, a book. Uh, in this case, I'm going to say, we're on Chris's channel, I'm going to say, just join Members Monday because you, you've got this you, incredible opportunity to just go straight to the source and just watch him, uh, watch Chris do deliver a piece of training and, and just go and ask him questions. And it's just instant feedback and learning from probably one of the best people in the world, frankly. Oh, so hell, thank you. <coughs> I, I will be getting my cut, right, Chris? Um, oh, yeah, yeah. You, you're in the model, in the commission. <laughs> Don't worry. I, I kid, but, but um, I kid, but I, 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 I uh, you know, I, I talk about this with my own students. You know, I, I when I was young, I, I didn't have a whole lot of money but whatever I used to have little I would put into something whether that was a book whether that was a, a, a one day in person training course whether that was a new suit that I'd take to an interview and it would just snowball and, and escalated and, and, and you know helped me definitely progress in my career so always reinvest a little bit in yourself and Excel training. Excel training is a no-brainer for me I know there is so much free stuff out there and Chris uh, also has free stuff but when you when you go and pay someone, you get the opportunity to have things structured, which is so important because it take, it saves you time, and also you get feedback. So that's my that's kind of a big thing for, for me that I recommend to anybody. Nice. Um, so Chris, uh, I've, I've got some other stuff that I wanted to ask you. Cool. So we talked a little bit about teaching university. Um, I've, we've talked uh, a little bit about, um, you know, your kind of your philosophy on, on Excel and, and you, you've mentioned that you've seen some of the videos and you've talked about p different ways of doing different things. Now, have you yourself delved into something like Power Query, which you specifically reference and Power Pivot? 
because th- those are two things that I'm I'm seeing and I I'm beginning to kind of you know I'm beginning to turn a little bit you know I'm feeling yep. the, the 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 force of the Sith and it, it's <laughs> you know I, I, and I, I I do Power Query you know I'm going to come out now of the uh, yeah. of the closet I do use Power Query myself quite yep. a lot and uh, quite quite frankly it, it is really good it's really oh, yeah. good so I'm curious like what are your thoughts specifically on those sure. two. They, because they've been around for a while now. I don't want to talk too much about dynamic arrays and stuff. They're all still in beta testing and whatnot. Yeah. But they are proven tools. So how do you feel about those? Do they fit into Yeah, well, work? I, uh, confession time, I have dabbled. I have not been completely <laughs> faithful to VBA. Yeah. Um, let me tell you what happened. I think this story is really instructive. Um, so about a month ago, I had a, a client meeting that down in London. So got to get, get to go to the big smoke, got, got my suit on. Nice. And um, so I'm going to see my customer, customer about five years, uh, working in the uh, sports space. So he's he's working with football data, uh, fo- football results. Mm. And um, so I'm going I'm going down to this meeting and I'm chatting to him on on, on WhatsApp. And he said to me, um, "Or well, how, how would you feel about this? Say, if this happened to you?" He said to me, "Oh, by the way, um, I've got another Excel guy coming down, and he's um, he's done some stuff for me using Power Query." Um, cool. so I just want, I just want you two to have a chat about it. And, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> it was, yeah, I was to- totally unexpected. Um, yeah. so we had this meeting and to be honest, this, this, it, it was a very kind and easy to get, get much like yourself, easy to get along with kind of guy. But he'd done, he'd done all this stuff in Power Query, and it's very interesting uh, what we were doing. This was actually to do with uh, horse racing, mm. and it's um, it's an optimization model. Yeah. So so, if you look at horse racing racing data, we've got about thirty columns of data mm. uh, to do with form, to do with uh, the betting prices, to do with uh, the distance of the races, things like that. And I've built built a tool so you can go through. Um, We've got about 30,000 rows of data and using D sum, yeah. uh, you can just, you can just change, change some of the criteria, change the race distance, change the jockey, yeah. and you can immediately see the betting returns because wow. this, this is to do with optimizing betting returns. And, and I was like, great. And he said, listen, I've done the same thing in Power Query. And, and, and I was looking at it in Power Query and he was like, yeah, it does automatic data, cl- data cleanse. I'm like, great, I'm having to do that in VBA. Yeah. Um, and then you do a query like this and, and it's great. And I was like, well, yeah, looks fantastic. And, and then we said, but we are giving this to customers because this, this particular company I'm working with, they're, they're providing these products for other people to use. So we're talking about Excel lay people, if I can say such a thing, if that makes sense, yeah, use, yeah. using these tools. Now this for me is where a Power Query yeah and and pivot tables actually fall down because if layperson type users have to manipulate the interface yeah no matter how simple it seems to us and no matter how many video resources you do to explain it yeah. it's it's just very difficult for users to do that so the conclusion of this conversation after after some stress and um after after really kind of uh being being quite nervous about it the, yeah. the the outcome from the conversation was if you want that super slick usable user-friendly functionality it's very difficult to beat vba for that um yeah. and the vba model i've i've built for this uh, on this project and in fact my model went went on to the next level because the basic model is on a level where the user can change different variables and see the results. So effectively uh, find their own betting strategies. But I've put an optimization in that that goes through all of the different combinations of variables. And there's a progress bar going along the screen and it says, you know, checked 1,000 combinations of 23,000 combinations and you can leave it to run for an hour and it checks it checks ten thousand combinations and and um, gives you a printout of the top fifty. Fantastic. So that, but so, but what I'm saying, I'm not I'm not showing off to everybody. But what I'm saying is, if you're going to give something to to, to a user, as in yeah. 
the the average you know person in the streets um yeah. for me vba gives you that super user-friendly foolproof functionality that pivot tables and the other tools don't quite yet yeah 100% concur. It's something I've seen. So when I when I use, you know, a typical way I use Power Query in my work is uh, to get gather data from SharePoint. Yeah. Um, that's how I'm using it currently in some of the projects I'm doing on my client site. And um, for that, you know, it, it, that is just about all right because it can do a refresh. And that's yeah. and, I, and I, all I've said is, and I've, I've actually, I, 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 strangely enough, ironically, I've created a button, VBA button, yeah. and that button, and it <laughs> sits in the middle of the sheet. They're fine with that. They're not, they're not perturbed by it, yeah. and they know they've got it. And the, and the, the, the instruction is simple: just refresh the query. Um, but you're right; it is so much of it is just perception, and um, uh, you know, like, like we, we, again, just to bring up Roger again. Uh, Roger hides columns and row labels mm. because he he finds that clients do not have time for that. You know, different clients are at different levels and different understanding. Yeah. But but yeah, empathy is 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 the name of the game, and I, and I uh, you, you nailed it. And and you're right; you can create standalone VBA applications. I mean, you know, you know that that definitely did wonders for my career. Just creating these standalone mm. things, and then and then you know, like in your case, what you just talked about, a progress bar. You know, where you, as a user, you know where you stand with all of yeah, that. It's, totally, totally. Yeah, it's about yeah. communication. I mean, what I've found from watching the Excel Online Summit videos, which are mm. brilliant, another plug, but make sure you work through them, is people are working with different. Um, Obviously, they're in different situations. I'm in a situation where my files have to go to um, people who aren't confident in Excel and they have to be able to use them. But other people, they're actually solving problems. They're using the tools themselves to solve the problems. If that's the case, then there's much less emphasis on user interface and user communication. And it's, it's actually a completely different design approach. You can build something quite quick and dirty to get the job done because you know you're going to be you're going to be doing it yourself. If yeah. I did that kind of I don't do any projects like that where, where a client says, listen, just analyze the data and give us the answers. Everything mm -hmm. I build, I'm giving back to a customer and then the customer is often sending it to their customers as well. So um, but I think if a customer just came for answers, then I'll be getting much deeper into um, Power Pivot, Power Query, etc. I love it. Yeah, you're, you're, and that's great. And I love that delineation. That look, if, mm. if you, you only deal with things that have to be handed off to a client, and then they've got to go and hand it off to a client. Yep. Whereas, whereas if you if you're just doing the ad hoc stuff and you've got to give answers, it's you can do what you want. That's a brilliant split, and that's a great way for anyone to think about it. Because when I spoke to Christian, Cristiano Galvão, um, who, who's uh, you know he, he's a consultant from Brazil currently in New York he's in, in the summit and he, he said he, he uses uh, dynamic arrays and all this new stuff with clients but he only does it for himself and he he'll use it because he can quickly get some answers um, even it's for him it's even quicker than VBA in some cases and then he can just he, he then pastes the values and then sends those over to the client so yeah so people are using it for their quick and dirties yeah. um, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, nice. With that said, uh, um, the other thing I'm playing around, I've been playing around with in the last few years is is Power Pivot and um, Power BI. So um, again, but my, my view of these things, and, and when I spoke to Matt Allington about this, who's really kind of going much more deeper into the Power BI route, I think that they're always going to be fringe tools. I think they're always going to be a subset of the solutions that need to be built. Um, Excel will always be kind of, you know, the, 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 the elephant in the room, so to speak, in mm. terms of um, <laughs> actually solving problems. Um, but we, we are, you know, because cause the other thing is that we, a lot of people use these tools for big data, but big data is, a, is, is not actually most of the work. The majority of the work, and, I, I, and, and you, you can attest to this, is I, I refer to it as small data. It's yeah. just kind of uh, smaller sets of data you know, less than 10,000 rows um, quite often, and it, it, you don't need fancy things to, to deal with it. But once you start going over that, once you start having multiple things coming in, then I, I found Power, Power Pivot to be really useful for that. And, mm -hmm. and Power is just, I guess it's built to just give you quick quick outputs. But yeah. all of those things 
you know, they can't do you know a fraction of what you can do when you can leverage VBA and and, and all that. So I, I, I do think. Yeah. I mean, what what I would say. I mean, a slight. A slight gripe. This this is the XL Rebel speaking now. A slight gripe I have with the. Um, we need a little alert. Of pop we do, don't we? We do, rebel. don't we? Yeah. Like like a siren uh, flashing here. Yeah. Um, but it's when um, so XL releases a new feature, and uh, for example, the dynamic arrays. Yeah. There's a lot of clamor and narrative around it. That the Microsoft promotes itself, saying you know things like this changes everything. And things like you'll never work in the same way again now, be, be, yeah. because of this new thing. Yeah. But uh, you know, if I could change one thing, I'd I'd like to moderate that, uh, <laughs> mod moderate that kind of promotion, because because yeah. ultimately you're not managing people's expectations. You know, and people and people go in and they're like, I've got Power BI now, I can do everything. But then yeah. you realize, as you said, it's actually a tool for doing working with specific problems. And then, and then you get, you know, your average user who's put some time into a new tool actually ends up coming out even more frustrated and just kind of, um, you know, reinforcing their neg negative view of Excel. So if I could change one thing, I'd, I'd, like the, I'd like the narrative to be more pragmatic, you know, and saying, yeah. listen, you know, add this to your tool set yeah. rather than this changes everything. Love it, I love it. But Chris, let's um, say uh, you know that that's really what it comes down to. We're in the we're in the age of fake news and and bluster. And, but that's and that's that's a great point. I was having a conversation um, yesterday about about YouTube, and you know what does YouTube like? YouTube yeah. YouTube doesn't like people. Uh, well, like me, trying mm. to explain. You know, don't do don't don't do the wrong thing right. Do the right thing wrong. YouTube doesn't have time for that. YouTube yeah. promotes videos where it's like five tips for get better for getting better at Excel, you know, and yeah. really getting into the fundamentals and getting into the right mindset. You know, YouTube doesn't really does, doesn't really promote that. It's it's a classic case of for the Excel learner, what you want and what you need are two different things. You know, yeah. you want you want someone to give you five tips. Okay, five minutes, I'm done. But yeah. what you need is someone to sit you down, just like your shot put coach did back in the day for you, Sir Hale. I know to sit you down and tell you to wind your neck in, you know, yeah. put, put, put your ideas up. We need the proper mindset. We need some serious time commitment here. It's going to be painful, but the skills that you learn are potentially life changing. So, so suck it up for a bit, you know, but trying to explain that narrative um, in the kind of 20 second attention window that people have on YouTube is base is basically impossible. But but we're trying. I'm trying. I think I think you're trying as well. So hell. Keep fighting the good fight. No, I, I, to yeah. be honest, sometimes I feel like losing that fight because I think that maybe it is the right way to go and do a bit of clickbait and this and that. It's a tough one. But let me let me talk about Oz du Soleil. So I don't know if you've seen Oz's video, his interview, but Oz is, Oz is one of my favorite people in this community because he, he's just so entertaining. And and actually he talked about his process and he said he, he said he came to the same crossroads. Look, he was making these, these tutorials and, and the sensible tutorials. And he just felt that they weren't going anywhere. So yeah. he spiced things up. And, and it's a great channel. Also, this channel is also, I know, Shane, I, I, I hope it's all right to, to, to mention. Oh, no, of course. Of course, mate. Yeah. Um, but he does some very kind of creative things. But but it comes at a cost. You know, he, he mm -hmm. took us, he took me through behind the scenes of a, a seven-minute video. I think it was an eight-minute video. And it took eight hours to, to, to make, mm -hmm. uh, most of which was just editing and, and making it, you know, really entertaining. So it, it, you can do it, but it, it comes at a cost. But um, I think, you know, Chris, I'm looking at your channel. You've got 33,000 subscribers. That, that is a, that's a, a remarkable uh, number of people. So you are doing something right. And, and I, I can only imagine that number's just going to grow and grow and grow. And um, I like what you said to me when we were talking the other day. And you said, you know, you talked about the slow burn and, mm. and something very powerful about the slow burn because... <clears throat> everything in life and it took me a long time to realize this consistency oh, you yeah. know, patience and patience, consistency and patience are, are you know the sort of the, the, the foundation of absolutely of well you were tell so you you were telling me yesterday about a very famous you about Layla Lay Layla Garani yes and you were saying how oh, you, oh, you don't mind me making this public but you, you were saying that she almost gave it up YouTube and uh, and now she's got um, you know uh, what 200,000 subscribers or something 
in case she's watching this, yeah. I don't know. I've never had a direct conversation with okay. her. Okay, I've just, I've just so dropped you straight in it there, mate. I just dropped yeah, you no, straight in it live. I apologize. <laughs> that's fine. I, I, so I believe, so, so I, we have a mutual contact and he, he, and I spoke to him two years ago before, I think she has a very big YouTube channel now. I'm, I'm, I know Mike Gervin's got a really big YouTube channel and I know John Akampura has got one. I know hers is big. I don't keep an eye on everyone's, but, um, uh, I believe I believe uh, that the, the, our mutual contact mentioned her, and he said she was doing something, and it was very difficult. But then I think she kind of she must have hit that um, she must tipping have started point. doing it right yeah. uh, that tipping point, I guess. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, yeah. No, please carry on. Please carry on. No, 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 no. That's as I was just saying. It's um, as you say. It you know, it can feel like a long slog sometimes. Uh, content creation. You know, I mean, yeah. to the to to the viewers who have proper jobs nine to five jobs they're like come on you're making videos for money yeah. um but you know it's not it's you'll be surprised how little money it is and um it is it can, can feel like a bit of a slog sometimes uh, particularly when um i'm certainly not complaining but when you when when you're providing your best stuff and yeah. and you know just 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 doesn't go doesn't go down too well you know that can that, that can be frustrating but i'm liking the pra the pragmatic approach you're advocating where you have some 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 clickbaity stuff but balance yeah. it out balance it out with some of the more um the stuff that you're the that you really believe in you know as always the pragmatic yeah. approach is, is is the way yes yes i think i think that's it so um so yeah so we, we we've had quite a journey on because I'm, I'm sort of looking at the time now we've been on for close to an hour now is that right gosh yeah i've got 45 minutes i've got oh, yeah yeah so we know yeah. that we started our, our stream late but, so so um yeah. we'll keep talking but before before we do we will have to go soon and one of yeah. the things I, I want to know from you is kind of what is what is a day in the life of Ooh. chris look like and Feel free to tell me about your week because I know you've got one day in the week where you just where you where you're a, a, a lecturer. Mm. But, but it's about your tell us about a typical day and maybe. Yeah, you know. well, <laughs> my girlfriend's just looking at, looking at me out the window, and if she could answer this question, I imagine it would be different. <laughs> <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be different to my answer. But I mean, I, I can tell you the one thing that always happens is mm. um, I always walk the dog. Nice. Every day, non non negotiable either once or twice, depending on if my partner's here. Yeah. And um, it's funny, that provides some structure for my day and it, it, it provides, you know, daily exercise. It provides a daily space to, uh, you know, for thinking, for planning, for mental organization. And it provides a daily daily space to in, interact with an animal. And um, and I, I mean, anybody who's got a dog out there knows knows that they're kind of, very, very special animals so that's that's that might be my secret weapon you know what whatever happens that that is always uh, scheduled in and it is can i just pause you for yeah. a second because I, I love talking about this is that it, it is your it is a secret weapon because one of my favorite books of all time is called brain rules it's by john medina who's a, who's a neurologist <clears throat> and he's got and, and and the book is about things you can do for your brain and mm. the very first thing he talked about, and he says the best thing you can possibly do for your brain is just walking. And he's yeah. got these MRI scans of before brain activity, before and after like frontal lobe activity, before and after walking, and it's just remarkable. And I and over the years I've sort of transitioned from using a lot of coffee to yeah. less coffee, but more walking, and, and and that's made a difference. So and I, I do my best thinking as well. And and the other person is 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 he's a great guy. He's a fellow academic for you, I guess. Uh, that would be Cal Newport. He's one of my okay. favorite bloggers, and he wrote the book. Um, he wrote the book uh, Deep Work and, and other things, and, and he had he has this concept called the outdoor office. So he he, he does yeah. distributed uh, and cloud computing research. So it's extremely technical stuff, and he he will he will go for what um, four or five hour walks in 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 the country in the forest, uh, and and he does all of his thinking. He does all of his problem solving as he walks. And I love that that you do that as well. So mm. so it's great. It's a you you. I think you're a great sort of uh, 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 you know evangelist for for for, for that. I, I love that you do that. Walk with your dog. So we should we should we should we should write a blog post about that. I think. Yeah yeah yeah. You should write a blog post. Yeah but yeah go yeah yeah Sorry. maybe yeah. Sorry for no, 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 no. It's all good. It's all good. I mean, I do, th I do think that's so important. But um, 
you know, I can't, I can't say I'm a, I'm a kind of workaholic. <laughs> you know, I'm not, I'm not doing super, super long days. Um, I'm a great believer that um, if you're doing creative work, you've got to do it in the right mental space. You've yeah. got to do it in the right physical space. Um, and I'm also a believer that, well, the concept of work, work and play and the idea that they're two distinct things doesn't apply in the 21st century anymore. So, yeah. you know, this weekend I'm going to spend uh, four or five hours uh, do shoot, shooting YouTube videos. But but to me, it, you know, it's, it's not work. It's um, it's kind of like self-expression almost that that stuff. And it, and it, and it work, works the other way as well. You know, if you know in the middle of the week, you know, sometimes I can, um, you know, take some time off to do to, to do something else. Um, yeah. So I mean, I, for me, the more time you put in, it's it it is a case of diminishing returns, and um, I don't try to work uh, when when I'm tired. Uh, you know what it's like if you're doing programming, and yeah. you're knocking out work when you're exhausted. It's going yeah. to have errors in, and that's going to be coming back from the customer. And oh, yeah, yeah. How many of those emails have you got? So um, <laughs> I don't know. More I think. Oh, yeah 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 me too and um i think i've got yeah. to got to quite a good space where where um i think what i've managed to do is is design a job for myself and i've yes. been five or six the challenge for the next five or six years is to scale it up into a business right so that's that's the, that's what i'll be looking at i love that and and that's why to me chris is very much a leader in in, in this community because he's designed a job for himself that that is i think that's a, a kind of a dream for a lot of people um i i work with a lot of people and i've i've held my own fantasies of designing a job for myself i'm not quite mm. there yet um but but that's great um so so uh okay so 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 let's talk let's go back to to, to your 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 day so yeah you, yeah so so okay so you, you, you occasionally you'll you'll and you batch your content production, I'm, I'm guessing. Is that what as, you do? As far as possible. As far as possible, yeah. So on, on any given day, I'm usually doing client work yeah. or I'm doing um, video production or yeah. or I'm teaching. Um, and, and the teaching is maybe one day a week or e e even less than that at the moment. I'm able to pick and choose like what I do a little bit now. Um, so, but the thing is, I love it all, mate. That's, that's the thing. I'm like just incredibly fortunate you know if i'm getting yeah. out of bed and i'm i'm knocking up a new file for a customer get to send that to the customer get to do them a guidance video and get the feedback if it's good or bad you know i, yeah. I just I, I, I love it you know i love try, trying to create value for them if i'm doing video content then that's kind of it's it's almost a piece of art for me how 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 you do that i know that i know that sounds almost pedantic not in terms of the presentation but in terms of how you do the content and everything yeah. um and then i get to meet i get to meet dudes like you so um so, so yeah, yeah yeah so you know you know whatever i'm up to i, I feel really um g generally very motivated you know apart apart you know obviously the youtube grind is ca can get you down yeah um yeah. but um well, every day I wake up, I've got a I've got a dog in th enthusiastically li licking me. So yeah. um so yeah, so it's 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 always a good start to the day. Fantastic. <laughs> that yeah, you're right. I think you, you you come up you strike me as someone who who's got a lot of gratitude and you know, you talk about being lucky and fortunate and, and those things. So I think you're a very positive person and I, I hope people take that away as well. I think what you put in, um, you know, you, 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 you get what you put in. So so it's great to hear you talk talk about all that. Thanks, man. Um, so, um, oh, actually, one question I've got, and it's kind of going. A bit, I'm ruining the flow here. No, that's um, okay. Uh, it's it's yeah. I've asked I've asked a number of people this question. I can't quite work it out from you. I normally am able to work it out. Would you yeah. describe yourself as more of an extrovert or an introvert? I know it's. A oh yeah, I heard you. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You asked you you asked Deborah this, didn't you? I asked a few people this question. Yeah. Uh, oh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna I'm going to give you such a rebel answer. I'm sorry. Oh, yes. oh, <laughs> oh dear. Okay. With all due respect to, to, to Deborah and listen, I've, I got massive value out of that video and out of so many other videos, watch the yeah. X line on, on XL online summit videos, but I don't know. I, I just think it's kind of become fashionable to say yeah. that you're an introvert the, these well, days. 
Uh, controversial. I know, controversial. But I've yeah. never seen somebody say, I'm an extrovert when uh, an answering that question personally. Um, yeah. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm prone to massive, you know, moments of self-doubt and um, lack of confidence and lethargy and everything else. But if you look ob look objectively at what I do, you know, I was I was pumped to talk to you today. You know, I love st stand standing up in front of 150 people doing a lecture, doing doing the YouTube content. You know, it, it would yeah. be difficult to argue that I'm introverted, I suppose. Yeah. So I, I think yeah. sometimes pe people can mistake feeling tired or feeling reluctant for introversion. And yeah. you know, in, in, in my view. Um, it would be silly for me to try to argue that I'm, that I'm introverted. On the other hand, um, I do a lot of work on my own, you know, mm. uh, doing programming yeah. VBA on my own. Um, but making videos, you're making videos because you want to connect with somebody else, you know. Um, yeah. So I think it'd be difficult to argue that I'm introverted. I, th I think I've got, I don't know, may may maybe a bit of both. I'm not sure. What, what do you think about that one for, for yourself? Uh, I, I, when I was young, I, when I was young, I, I was an introvert and then from years like, and that's how I got good at VBA actually and, yeah. and, and Excel and, uh, I, I was programming before that as well. Um, and, uh, and then slowly as I, as I wanted to shift my career, uh, and change my identity from a kind of a technical person to a, um, you know, managerial to non then, you know, I had, I got some mentors and they just kind of got me out of my comfort zone. Nice. Now I would, I would probably, when, whenever I do these, if I, I, I did one recently, one of the Myers Briggs and it comes out quite extroverted. And I do, I find that now actually, if I sit on my own, I, I need to get out and I need to speak yeah, to people. Yeah. Yeah. It's a transition gone on over the years but at the same time i can come if i really need to knock a piece of work out i can sit by myself yeah. for five six hours so i think the phrase is ambivert you know and i okay. think that's, i think that's what that's what um a lot of people are they can kind of shift between the two mm. uh, uh between the two and, and that's kind of a survival mechanism right you, you you've yeah. got to do that right um, yeah. I, I think sound in your. I, I think when I, but when I in the summit when I speak to people and, I, and clearly they're ambiverts. I think they're just driven by passion as well. Mm -hmm. That you know, look, if I need to stand in front of a, you know, hundred totally. people in your case, hey, no problem. I'm talking about you know something I, I believe in. And, uh, Absolutely. And like, yeah, yeah. And that so, and that that might be a good note to kind of finish it on. You know, for the people watching, I think we had yeah. we've gone down a bit. At one point, we had about fifteen people watching, but but trying to find something you believe in yeah and, and for me the way to find that is by having a broad range of experiences and getting involved with as many different things like so hale's just set this up i've got involved get involved with as many different things be active as, in as many different spaces as possible yeah. you will find what matters to you and then That's and then these days guys we're so lucky to have ways to disseminate information we've got youtube we've got podcasts whatever you're passionate about start making content about it it doesn't need to be well polished content it doesn't need to be curated um but start get find find what it is and start making content and you know what it's what it's like a side hustle can turn into a job can turn into a business can turn into your legacy you know amazing i love it that's a great sentiment to end on um and i think unfortunately the time has come i reckon we, we should yep. call it and uh yeah Let's do this again. Me and you, we, we've got to meet up anyway, personally, right? Absolutely, so, mate. Absolutely, so, yeah. Yeah we're, yeah, we're just a couple of hours away, so let's do yeah. that. All right, well, 100%. thank you so much, uh, 